Hey guys, so what we're working on today is the old Dirty Max. And if you're looking at this right now, we've got some serious starting issues. And um, it all started with it being zero degrees outside. And if you like the weather in Maine, just wait a minute, it'll change. Because today it was pouring rain and now it's kind of sunny. But anyways. I hope you guys enjoy this content and stay tuned because we're going to be throwing a starter in the old 01 Duramax today. So thanks for watching Overland Garage. But first of all, I apologize guys that I haven't been able to throw out some content for you. And that's because I had COVID and uh, I was really sick. And you can probably still hear it in my voice a little bit that I got some of that raspiness going on. But enough about me and uh, we're back. We're gonna start working on some stuff. We're gonna start working on that Mustang again that's in there. And I'm just super excited to be back. So thanks for being patient with me and Let's just get in and start ripping this starter apart. Now, before we get into this job, I want to take a couple of seconds to talk about some of the tools we're going to be needing. So we're going to need multiple extensions, um, ratcheting wrench, 15 millimeter socket, 22 millimeter socket, uh, 3 8 impact, that's just for taking the center cap off and getting the lug nuts looser than they need to be. 9 16 wrench, this is for my battery. 7 16 this will be for the exhaust. Pry bar, of course you need a pry bar. This is for putting the wheels back on with a 22 millimeter socket, half inch impact, hammer, and some good light. So, I came out the other day and I was cranking on it, cranking on it, cranking on it, and it wouldn't start it just kept killing the battery so I went and bought two brand new batteries for this truck and what I'm showing you right now is the starter is right there and so I'm gonna show you the process to get that out of there and if you can see it I don't know if you can see it but if you look way in there there's a starter wire that powers the actual starter from the solenoid to the starter motor itself and that is like broken off due to corrosion so that's why the starter stopped working. The starter was having issues, and um, I knew it. But, you know, like anything, you try to just baby it along, and hopefully it keeps running. But, no, it wasn't the case. So we're going to do a starter on this, and I'm going to go step by step and show you exactly what we got to do. Now, the absolute first thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect both batteries. All oh, those brandy new shiny Napa batteries. And um, a little trick I will show you that I've done is that's a 3 8 bolt. Something simple, just cut this casing back. And I know that if you know anything about side post terminals, you know as much as I do that they are terrible if you want to jump start a vehicle. So I replaced them with a stainless bolt and a nut. It's pretty simple. And then that gives you something to jump off of and, you know, connect your accessories and whatnot. But first things first, before you do anything with electrical, Disconnect the negative cable on that battery, on both batteries that is. So that's what we're gonna do first. So first things first, let's get this disconnected so that we don't, you know, electrocute ourselves. And we'll push that out of the way. The old dirty max in there. And then we'll do the same thing with this side. And the reason you disconnect the battery when you're working on stuff like this is because, especially with a starter, starter doesn't take much and you can literally bump the wire against something and it will engage the starter. 
And you don't want to do that when you're underneath the truck and trying to install a new one or something. Now the next thing we're going to do is get this tire off and that's a 22 millimeter but I got the jack under there. As you can see the weather has been awesome for these days. We're going to get a little wet. That's okay. And you know what I usually do is just go until, you know, I hit something. But we're going to do the right thing and uh, actually jack on something that looks like we can jack on. Because, you know, you don't need this thing falling on the ground on you. That should be enough. fender right here and they have a lot of these little push pin things kind of like it was on the Mustang check that video out I'll throw a link up here for that too but uh, it has an inner fender well and so you got a bunch of these little I'll just show you one's falling out so that makes it easy see these little push pins they literally just push in but yeah that's the that's the rough rub so we're gonna take all those out, take that inner fender out, and then you'll have we'll have access to the starter area. Now, now I can guys, wow, now I can get you guys in here and see what we got to work with. And as you can see, everything is crammed in there. You can see the starter, right? You know, it's right there. It looks like, oh yeah, it would come right out of there. But um, nope, because the exhaust actually, if you can see it right here, that clamp has to loosen up and I have to disconnect the exhaust right there to get the starter to drop out of there and then I will show you the process of getting the star actual starter out of there but let's get this exhaust disconnected and I think that's a 10 millimeter or 11 millimeter and we're gonna try to crawl on the ground under here on my creeper and see if I can get under there and get that e dis exhaust disconnected
Now supposedly with this over here being disconnected, that gives you enough room to wiggle it around to get the starter out. So we'll see. The next thing I need to do is in here, there's two 15 millimeter bolts, but first I need to take the wires off the starter in there. So we're gonna try to get a wrench on this, see if this will turn. And maybe this will turn too, or it might already just be broken off. But I'm gonna try to get a socket on those and try to save those, get those to come off. So that's what we're gonna do next. This one seems to be an eight millimeter. Don't need this extension. What's about to happen here? Funny, always the ones that you don't think are gonna turn. Those are the ones that always turn. The ones you think are gonna come right out, those are the ones that break. This is the tricky part. That was all the easy stuff. Getting these wires out of the way. The next one is there's a 50 millimeter bolt up top here, which that's not too bad. But the one down below, you need like a long extension. I think with my two foot long extension, I could come somewhere out in here underneath. But I'm going to grab a 15 millimeter socket, an extension, a wrench, and uh, we'll see what happens. Alright, let's see. This is the one that's supposed to be easily accessible. But of course it's not gonna be why would it be? <clears throat> well it might be some persuasion. Sad thing is, is I was the one that took this out last time. So. What was that? Get some. leaking. I'm gonna go bandage that up. I'll be right back. Uh, I saved you guys all the heartache of watching me get that top bolt out which took like 20 minutes but now there's a bottom one down in here and I'm gonna try to fan dangle my extension in there and I'll show you why why it's so tricky. So I'm under the truck here and what I was going to show you is if you have a two foot long extension, which is I got this up in here, you can go up in front of the front sway bar and you go straight back, all the way back, and then you can get the starter bolt. So you, you're literally all the way out here on the end of the truck, but yeah, this is with an extension out here. And that's basically the easiest way I've found to get that bottom bolt out. So I'm going to take that bottom bolt out. And then the starter should drop out. So I got the old one out and uh, I just want to swing this camera around and show you why it failed and then show you the new one. And I'm going to talk about why I do this. So let's spin the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. So this is the old one. And as you can see, this is supposed to be connected to this. It's all loosey-goosey. But it's also, it's all brittle and like cracked and burned up. And I think what happens with these is this waterproof, well, water resistant we'll say in this case, sheathing starts to deteriorate and as it ages it just gets all brittle and then it makes a bad 
connection with the solenoid, which this is a solenoid, and then it fails. And the reason why I have the new one out is first of all, when you have them out, you want to look to make sure the posts are in the same places. Now this thing mounts in there like this. So that's fine because you got the posts on the bottom and this is the power wire from the truck. And then you got this little jumper solenoid wire. And this is what tells it from ignition when the key is turned on, this tells this to power the starter. So that's pretty simple. And then the other reason why I always have the two starters beside by side is this right here. Cause you want to make you want to make sure that they're the same length because when you go to put this thing in there and it's not right and you're swearing and throwing stuff and breaking stuff you could have just done this and go yep they're the same length they're gonna be fine so I'm gonna save you guys the heartache of uh, putting it all back together and I'm gonna just uh, reverse the process of what we started and uh, try to get this thing together before dark uh, we've lost power here so I'm running out of daylight and I got to get this thing back together because I need this truck tomorrow. So I'm going to throw this back together and then I'll catch up with you in a little bit and see how, if she starts. Hey guys, it's like two days later and um, it's like 15 degrees outside and I wanted to do this to show you the kind of before and after starter issue. Before it would just go clink, clink, clink and it wouldn't even turn over. But um, this is going to be a cold start, an absolute cold start, and I'm um, going to show you the difference and see if you notice any differences. It's a lot better, and I'm pretty happy with it. So we're just going to hop right in here and, well, I guess I should get the keys and unlock it first. But we're going to hop right in, do the old cold start. Get the old wait to start thing to go on here. She is cold blooded, but I'll do it again just to let you hear it. Way better. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that content. We finally made it to 220 something subscribers and that's only by your help. So uh, keep supporting the channel, keep spreading the word on Overland Garage, keep shouting out and saying, hey buddy, I got a new channel I want you to check out and it's Overland Garage. And uh, I appreciate all your support and hopefully soon we'll get back to working on this bad boy, the Mustang. But you know the weather in Maine and it's been brutally cold and I'm looking forward to spring and looking forward to getting out and just working on this and firing the key and hearing this baby run. So I hope you guys uh, tune in and stay a supporter of the channel. But until next time, keep the greasy side down and this has been Overland Garage. Thank you for tuning in today.